Hey y'all, Tanny Cooks here. Today I'm gonna to be cooking a big feast for my family. Well, actually, I'm just gonna be starting the feast for my family. I'm gonna show you how to make an absolutely delicious baked ziti with semi-homemade tomato sauce. And I'm also gonna fry up some delicious fish and we'll take a look at what else I'm gonna to add to this meal. So, let's get to cooking. So actually, I'm starting the night before because I make a homemade tomato sauce. And so I like to do that the night before just to let the flavors gel together overnight and then I'll reheat it tomorrow and assemble the ziti uh, when my family arrives. But tonight I'm also gonna go ahead and cook my meat as well. So I'm not gonna mix that with my tomato sauce. I'll do that tomorrow as well. But if I get a couple of things done tonight, then that's less I'll have to do tomorrow. Okay, so let's take a look at some of the ingredients I'm gonna be using today. I am going to use a couple of different types of ground turkey. So of course, you can use ground beef, but this happens to be the 85% lean, 15% ground turkey. I think this was buy one, get one free. At a different point in time, I bought this Butterball brand, which is 93% lean and 7% fat. So I have four pounds of ground turkey, and then I also have this one pound Italian uh, turkey sausage that's seasoned, is Jenny O brand. I'm using ZD noodles. I'm gonna use a 16 ounce box for each container. So for the amount of sauce I'm making, I'm gonna use two 16 ounce boxes of noodles. Seasoning, very basic, garlic powder, onion powder. I have some parsley and Italian seasoning. I have my aromatics, my bell peppers, onions, and garlic, and I have some mushrooms. I like that in my sauce. The star of my sauce will be my San Marzano peeled tomatoes. I have three of these in 28 ounce cans. You can see the nutrition facts on the back. The sodium in it is 40 mg, which is not bad at all. I have Food Lion brand diced tomatoes in a 28 ounce can, and the sodium in that is 180 mgs. And I mentioned this because tomato sauce in the jar has a lot of sodium, as we'll see later. So I do recommend buying canned tomatoes with no salt added. Publix does a great job of offering no salt added, which it still contains a minimal amount. Of sodium now look at this roasted garlic classical tomato sauce very delicious but look at the sodium 330 mg's of sodium per serving and there are five servings in this jar how many eat only one serving i found this tomato paste in a tube instead of a can that i never use all of so i like this but i'm not going to use it today but i will save it for the future so the first thing i want to do is wash my bell peppers i have a green one and a red one i'm also going to chop up my yellow onion as well as a little bit of garlic i also have minced garlic but since i have this beautiful head of large bulb garlic i'll go ahead and use this okay so while my um bell peppers are soaking in the vinegar water i'm gonna go ahead and start cooking my meat So I'm gonna let the sausage go for a little bit first because this is gonna have more fat in it than just the ground turkey will. So I'll let that re render out in my frying pan. The only thing about cooking with ground turkey is it doesn't have the same beautiful color as like ground beef does. But in the trade-off, you have less fat in ground turkey versus beef. So I'm just going to let this go on a medium heat so I don't burn my pan or burn the meat. I also have my whiting thawing out in a big bowl. I'm cooking four pounds of whiting from Walmart, so that's on the other side as well. So I guess what I'll do now is go ahead and chop up my onions and garlic so I can get those sauteing in my saucepan before I open up my tomatoes. So my ground sausage has been cooking down a bit. So now I'm gonna go ahead and add in some of my ground turkey. And then I'll add a little bit of seasoning to this. I'm gonna leave that oil from the sausage in the pan just to help give a little bit of fat to my ground turkey. But we're certainly gonna drain this off before we add it to our sauce later on. Some people may uh, choose to use a mixture of turkey and beef or ground turkey, ground beef, and ground pork. It's really up to your personal preference. Okay, so my big pan, I'm gonna heat up some um, olive oil so that I can saute my cut veggies. Not a lot, just a little bit. And while that is heating up, I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit of seasoning to my turkey meat. So that um, turkey sausage 
was Italian seasoned already. So I'm just going to add a little bit for the plain turkey that I added. So I'm going to add some garlic powder. So it's really important to me when I cook a dish to season it at multiple levels. Onion powder. I really can tell, I really can tell, and most people can, when a dish has just been seasoned at the end. So you just taste, I don't know, it's kind of peculiar to feel like one part of the dish is seasoned, but all of it isn't. So I'm going to add some Italian seasoning. So I'm going to season this meat, and then as we make the sauce and as we put it all together, we'll taste it again and decide if anything needs to be added at that time. So that was garlic powder, onion powder, and onion powder. Now because I'm cooking a big amount of meat and sauce, I'm doing it the way that I'm showing you. But some people may actually saute their sausage in a pan to render that fat out, take the sausage out, and saute their vegetables in that sausage grease, which would be absolutely delicious. But I'm not doing that. And there are many different ways to cook every dish. So what I show you in my videos is just one way that I happen to be doing in that moment. This pan is heating up. I'm gonna go ahead and add some of my veggies. So I have my red, green bell peppers, onions, mushrooms, and garlic. So I'm probably gonna go ahead and add my mushrooms and onions now and let them saute. And then I'll add the, did I say mushrooms? I'm gonna go ahead and add my bell peppers and onions now. And I'll add my mushrooms last. I'll add my mushrooms and garlic last because I don't want my garlic to burn and the mushrooms will cook quicker than the peppers and onions. I'm gonna use a separate uh, silicone spatula than what I'm using for my meat. So one for my meat and one for my veggies. If I was making this all in the same pan, then of course I would use the same one, but since it's two separate pans, two separate cook times, I'm just keeping my utensils separate as well. Look at how pretty this looks. So my peppers and onions are sauteing nicely. They are becoming translucent. I don't want them cooked hard and darkened. I just want them cooked through and softened. And also at this point, I do like to add a little bit of my dried herb seasoning to the pan. It will let these dried seasonings bloom sort of in a way that you don't get if it isn't heated up. So I'm adding a good bit of Italian seasoning to my sauteed peppers and onions. And that smell is amazing. So what I'm going to do now is go ahead and add my mushrooms and garlic as well. And as I cook this dish, I likely will cut up some more garlic to add as well. But you can add, you know, what your family likes. So if you don't like garlic, you don't have to use it at all. Well, how do you cook an Italian dish without garlic? I don't know. But... I suppose you can do whatever you want, right? Because it's your food in your kitchen. So you can absolutely leave out any ingredient you don't want to use. Peppers, onions, garlic, mushrooms. If you have someone that's a vegetarian, you absolutely could saute up these vegetables and just have it in a side dish. Maybe just put it over some garlic, olive oil, spaghetti, or butter spaghetti. So I guess that would be vegetarian. If you want it to be vegan, just use olive oil. And I'm gonna let this cook down until my mushrooms soften and release some of their liquid. And then once that cooks down, I'll be able to add my tomatoes and get this tomato sauce really going. Ground turkey is finished cooking. It's been seasoned as well. So now I'm just gonna drain that in a colander to get the excess fat off. And then I'll place that in my refrigerator. So what I've done now is opened up my cans of San Marzano. Is that how you say it? San Marzino or Zano? Um, you can see it on the screen, right? Even if I didn't say it correctly. Um, so I rinse the, the tops off of all of my cans. You can hit them under your water faucet or white vinegar. And so I opened up the cans. And what I did is I used a spoon to scoop my whole peeled tomatoes into a bowl because I'm gonna crunch these up with my hands and I just put the sauce in my pot. So I'll show you one can here. I'm just using my manual can opener to get it open. Marzano, I feel like, is the way. 
you want to be very careful with the sharp edges. So you can see it's um, it looks like sauce, but there are some whole tomatoes in there. And of course, you could just dump the whole can in your pan and use like a potato masher. I'm just using my spoon and I'm just letting some of the sauce drip into the pan. Oop. And there went a tomato. I'm gonna put on a glove right quick. This part is a little bit messy if you do it like me, but you know, it'll be okay. So I'm just squeezing the whole tomato to break it up into little pieces. This might be a fun task for a kid to do if you give them a glove and they wanna cook with you, let them uh, mash up the peeled tomatoes. And of course these will cook down some, but I like to mash them up a bit just so I don't have any huge chunks. So now I'm gonna empty this into my pot. And then I'm just gonna do the same thing with my last can of um, whole peeled tomatoes. So next I'm gonna go ahead and add my can of diced tomatoes and then let it simmer for a while. And I will see if I wanna add my little can of no salt added tomato sauce and my prepared store-bought tomato sauce. This might be good enough as is. It's looking quite lovely already, but we need to let it cook down. So I let it cook down some more, about an hour, and then I let the pan cool, and then I refrigerated the pan and the sauce overnight. The next day, I need to finish my sauce, fry my fish, make my ziti, and my salad. Okay, so I have my four pounds of whiting fish that thawed out in uh, cool water in the original bag. And then I have another bowl here where I'm gonna add my egg. Now you can um, dip your fish into egg or into mustard um, to help get the flour corma mixture to stay on it. This day I happen to be using egg, but I do both at different times. So because I have a good amount of fish, I'm just gonna start off with three eggs and then I can add more if I need to. So. I do like to season my egg and my flour mixture. So what I'm gonna season with is um, onion powder and garlic powder to start off with. So I'm gonna use some hot sauce. Now, if you've seen my other videos where I use hot sauce, you know I am a Texas Pete girl, but recently I have been loving on some Old Bay hot sauce. I love Old Bay seafood seasoning, and this hot sauce, it has a slightly different flavor than Texas Pete. I'm not gonna add a lot, and it's not gonna be too spicy. Um, let's see if you can see the ingredients list. The hot sauce is made of cayenne peppers, um, distilled vinegar, water, salt, well, I can't even see it with my eyes. I'm gonna have to read this to y'all later. Okay. So I do like to rinse off my fish, um, like my other meat before I cook it, but I don't wanna dilute my egg wash with too much water. and then I'm gonna dry it. Just smash it together in my paper towel. That to get most of the water off. And then stick it. And actually, I'm just gonna stick my fish in here, but I'm not gonna let the water drain in my bowl because I don't want my fish to be soaking in water. Um, if you leave this raw fish soaking in water, it's pretty thin. So it will break apart and I don't want that. I like to use one part all purpose flour and two parts cornmeal. And when I do my fried chicken, I do the opposite. I do two parts flour and one part cornmeal. But some people might buy the prepared fish mix. That's good. Some people may use panko breadcrumbs. That's good too. It's really up to your personal preference. So I'm just gonna use some cornmeal. I'm not measuring out. I'm just doing 
mostly cornmeal and a bit of flour. You really can make this according to your personal preferences. And I will season this flour cornmeal mixture as well. Um, now to season, if you use something that's dark like smoked paprika or obey, then that will cause your fish to fry up a little bit darker. It doesn't bother me, but some people may prefer a lighter golden presentation. Onion powder garlic powder because I did use hot sauce in my egg mixture and then I'm going to use some lemon pepper my favorite lemon pepper is this Kingsford I guess it is a partnership with Badia it has um, citrus peel in it for a nice kick and that's what I'm going to leave my breading as. once it cooks I'll add Obey and smoke sea salt and so here is my fish that I've rinsed off and then this is some fish that has been rinsed off and sitting in my egg mixture. So I'm going to take it from the egg mixture to the cornmeal, flour to the deep fryer. So i got to get that going. So I personally do like to let my fish or chicken sit in the breading mixture for a few minutes, maybe five or ten minutes before it actually goes in the deep fryer. So I'm just going to sit a few pieces in. Not overcrowd it because I will have to cook these in batches anyway. So I might as well sit them in the flour in batches as well. I'm just going to pat it on and then let it sit here for a few minutes. So I've been heating up my fry pan and I am adding oil. I buy canola oil by the gallon because this thing is pretty big. So it'll use it all up. But you want to be sure that you don't fill up your fryer because you don't want it to overflow when you add your meat or fish into it. So I have my breaded fish and I'm just adding a few pieces to my fry basket. This is the large fry basket. I don't want to overfill it. So I'm just going to cook three or four pieces at a time and then let it cook. And I'm letting it cook until I notice the fish starts to float to the top and is golden. So while that's going, I have my next batch that I'm getting ready. I'm taking the fish out of the egg wash and placing it into my cornmeal and flour mixture. And then I'll cook in batches until all four pounds of my fish is cooked. This fish is perfect. I hit it with a little bit of smoked hickory smoke sea salt after it comes out. I'm boiling a pot of water to cook my ZD noodles according to the instructions on the box. I'm cooking mine a little bit under, so about seven minutes. I am adding salt and onion powder and garlic powder to my pasta. I like to season it at this stage and I do not rinse it afterwards. My sauce, I took it out of the refrigerator. I'm heating it up, bringing it back up to temperature. I decided I didn't need to use the Classico um, sauce. I'm happy with what I have made, but I am adding more seasoning. So I'm adding more garlic powder and onion powder and Italian seasoning. And then I'm going to give that a mix. Next, I'll be adding my ground turkey meat that I seasoned and cooked up yesterday as well. I'm going to add that to my sauce. I just don't like for my meat to get overcooked. For some reason, the texture changes after a long time of cooking. So that's why I like to do mine this way. After it mixes all together, it is absolutely divine. The meat, the vegetables, the tomato, it's a perfect ratio of flavor and texture that I like. So I drained my 16 ounces of ziti noodles. I put them in a big bowl and I added more seasonings. I added some Italian seasoning and then I added some of my marinara meat mixture. You'll notice I still have batches of fish going on the other side. So I'm just giving my pasta a stir and I am adding some grated Parmesan cheese. My family loves cheese, so you don't have to add this or this much if you don't want to. But just give it a light stir. I did find two Pyrex deep dishes, deep dish pans at my local grocery store for $16. So I washed them out and then I'm going to use them here. So I washed out my first pan. You want to do that whenever you buy new dishes. And I am scooping my mixture into the bowl with a spoon because the bowl is so big and heavy. I didn't want to risk spilling it or burning myself. I'm only filling up my deep dish pan halfway because I'm going to add some things to the middle like cheese. I'm adding some more Parmesan cheese because I tasted it and I felt like it could handle the additional flavor. I am grating up some whole milk mozzarella. So this one pan will have eight ounces of mozzarella cheese. And I decided I'm going to put this grated mozzarella cheese on the top. And then you'll see the cheese I'm going to put in the middle. So I have this three cheese blend of 
Kraft, Monterey Jack, Colby, and Cheddar Cheeses. So that's going to go in the middle with the Parmesan. I'm going to mix it up a little bit so it's throughout the casserole. I did add a little bit of mozzarella in the middle. I can't help it, y'all. It's a slight addiction that I am working on, but I love the cheesiness. So this is what we have halfway through. So now I'm just going to add the other half of my pasta and meat mixture on top and then add my final layer of mozzarella cheese. You can use whatever blend of Italian white cheeses you want. I just happen to be using mozza mozzarella on this day. Now for my second pan of ziti, I'm going to do something a little bit different to make it more lasagna-like. So you might already can tell by the fact that I have ricotta cheese and egg. So I'm going to mix my egg and my ricotta cheese together. The egg will help the ricotta cheese um, be a little bit more firm, I think, is why I use it. And so I'm just giving that a mix together. And I am going to season this. So I season at every layer. So I'm adding Italian seasoning. I'm also adding my granulated garlic as well as my granulated onion because I like those flavors and I want my ricotta to have the flavor as well. I do the same thing when I make lasagna. So for this one, I put half pan of the pasta and noodles in it, Parmesan cheese, and now I'm adding dollops of my ricotta mixture. So this is going to add an extra level of creaminess and flavor to the middle of this baked ziti, which is my second one. The first one is already in the oven. I did have some chunks of mozzarella cheese that I added around the edges. The, this is chunks of cheese that I couldn't grate up because it was so small and I didn't want to hurt my fingers, so I just broke it up. And now I'm adding some shredded mozzarella cheese in the middle as well. And then after this, I am going to add my second layer of meat mixture and noodles on top and then my final layer of cheese on top. And so you can see the first one has been in the oven cooking. Everything in this casserole is cooked before we put it in the oven except for the egg. I bake this at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for about half an hour. That was all the time that mine needed. So while this is going, I decided to make a cucumber and radish salad with um, Asian inspired dressing. I have a separate video for this on my channel. So look back a few videos to see the recipe. This is absolutely delicious. And I opened up a can of corn as well. So here are my two baked zitis. You do want them to rest a good 20 minutes after you take them out. Y'all look at my fish. It was so crunchy and flaky and delicious. My beautiful salad that I topped with parsley, my canned cream corn, and this is air fried pork ribs. I have a video for this separate, so check a few videos back. Let's spoon up some of this ziti, y'all. Look at that. So flavorful, so delicious. I had several members of my family over. They ate and we had several to-go plates for them. These are full to dinner to-go plates. The salad is in the small one, but yeah, it was a lot of food that I cooked. A lot of food for my family to take home and I had a little bit of baked ziti left in the corner but that was enough for me because I cooked all day and I kind of was tired of looking at food. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching this video. Please watch my other videos and subscribe to my channel.